Hi, I'm Sudhir Bagara, and I'm going to talk on the setting of dialysis unit. While you think of setting of dialysis unit, certain things need to be considered. Careful assessment of location for the dialysis clinic is important. Developing a dialysis clinic is a multi-step process, and that must be approach methodically with focus attention to project needs and requirements. As with any medical facility, easy access and visibility is important for the patient. Emergency access should be given architectural consideration both for the patients who spend significant part of their day receiving treatment and for the medical staff who spends all the working day within the space must be the forefront among issues evaluated in a design process. So easy access, visibility for the patient, emergency access, all those things need to be considered while you plan the setting of dialysis unit. This is a couple of dialysis unit that we have designed. This you're saying that right side is a spacious one where you have enough space between the two rows of of the bed and the other side you can see the recliner where we have space limitation then probably you can go for the uh, <clears throat> recliner chair in order to optimize the space selecting premise for dialysis center is is again the crucial thing premise selection is a vital component of setting up dialysis center Location for a dialysis center should be easily accessible. Availability of public transport, for example, train, bus, road accessibility, availability of parking space, water and electricity supply, alternate source of water, adequate lift facility in case if you have a multi-story building is its key which makes premise or location most suitable for a dialysis center. Ideally, ground floor is the best space for dialysis center. And typically 2,000 to 3,000 square feet area is required for a 20 machine dialysis center. More number of machines are desirable for commercial viability of a dialysis center. However, if you are planning for small dialysis center, approximately 100 to 150 square feet area per dialysis machine is recommended considering all other uh, spaces that you require for a dialysis center. For example, your uh, clinic area, reprocessing area, store room, staff room, etc., etc. Physical planning space, is, is very, very crucial. There should be adequate space for each patient station with attendant equipment, and there should be sufficient separation space for a neighboring station. The space should be adequate enough for the movement of staff around the patients in order to provide a proper patient care and cleaning without encroaching on a neighboring station. Most dialysis bed and chair are 6 to 6.5 feet long and width about uh, 3 feet. And the dialysis machines are 2 feet width, requiring floor space about 4 to 6 square feet. Therefore, each dialysis station requires around 60 square feet area. However, American Institute of Architects recommends about 80 square feet per patient treatment chair or bed with minimum four feet distance between each patient chair, excluding all other furniture and equipment. Um, our own Indian Society of Nephrology recommends about 110 square feet area per bed. Treatment area should 
provide a safe, comfortable environment for the patient receiving dialysis. Doors and corridors need to be adequately spaced to accommodate movement of wheelchair, stretcher, or bed. The design of facility should meet with the fire and safety regulations of the government or local authority. The treatment area need to be planned to provide a safe and comfortable environment for a patient receiving hemodialysis. So while you plan physical space, physical space planning, that has to be appropriately planned well in advance before you go uh, to execute your dialysis center plan. Dialysis unit has a various equipment like dialysis machine, reprocessing machine, weighing machine, defibrillator, water treatment system, air conditioner, etc. Distribution of electrical line is very important. Every equipment has a different electricity requirement. Generally, dialysis machine requires about 16 ampere plug socket, whereas pumps in water treatment system will require three phase electrical supply. If dialysis center has a more dialysis bed, then it is important to distribute electrical load appropriately. Dialysis machine with a hot disinfection takes maximum input current during hot disinfection cycle. If electrical line supply to dialysis machine is not properly planned or load distribution is not properly planned, then there is a possibility of current trip if multiple machines are put in hot disinfection at the same time. Generally, for the dialysis session, uh, one need to plan one to two plug socket of 16 ampere and two to three plug socket of five ampere to operate other electrical equipment like a pulse oximeter, nebulizer, ECG machine, suction machine, defibrillator in case of emergency. Attention need to be given to plan electrical supply to water treatment room because water treatment room need to have a three phase electrical supply. While planning location for electrical panel, electrical safety need to be taken into account. Extra plug socket of three phase and the single phase need to install in the water treatment room. This will help uh, to operate your water treatment system in case your control panel of water treatment system goes in failure. Electrical safety equipments like voltage stabilizer, circuit breaker, or UPS need to be adequately planned. This would help to safeguard your expensive equipment. To minimize electricity uses, light equipment like uh, CFL tubes or LED light uh, can also be useful. And use of natural light, of course, would save a lot of electricity. <laughs> this may require um, initial expenditure, but in long run, it will save a lot of electricity. Use of natural light, of course, in a daytime, uh, with use of glass windows in dialysis treatment area will also save a lot of electricity. <clears throat> dialysis machine generates about 100 and 120 to 200 liters of dialysate waste per dialysis session of four hours. Moreover, it's a continuous flow. Therefore, planning of a drain line in a dialysis center is very important. So certain things need to be considered while designing a drain line in dialysis area. It is necessary to maintain one inch air gap between the equipment drain line and 
building drain line. This air gap prevents the possibility of uh, sewage being drawn into the machine or direct contact with uh, drain lines in event of sewage gets backed up. Dialysis drain produce foul smell. It also can attract fruit flies, which creates the infection control issues with the dialysis center. However, this issue can be resolved by pouring household bleach or commercial gel product down to the drain. To prevent the stagnation inside the drain pipe, it is important to maintain appropriate slope in a drain pipe. Discharge of this drain pipe in the building drain line need to be properly designed. Dialysis room drain line directly connected to the building chamber can create a problem in dialysis center. While planning this compliance with the local authority regulations or disposal of the drain need to be observed. Uh, <clears throat> while you plan your drain line, you need to plan it appropriately. You need to plan the slope of the drain line and the air gap between the uh, machine drain line and uh, your building drain line. You can also plan something like this, which is a concealed uh, drain line, uh, which will look also better and uh, prevent the stagnation in your drain line. <clears throat> so, so architectural planning is, is also very important. So while you making architectural plan, one has to consider the patient needs, dialysis staff needs, and also technical needs. Some people value more privacy, other wants to able to talk to their neighbors. They would like to socialize themselves. Some may need extra space for their family members. Other may want internet access, television, musical player. And if you have a pediatric patient, children taking dialysis, they may require access to DVD player or video game. Some patient will want or to be required to have a private room or an isolation room if you are dialyzing hepatitis B patient or HIV patient. Staff require clear visibility and easy access to the patients and medical equipment. One must remember that patient has to spend five to six hours in a dialysis center for a three times in a day. For many patients, dialysis center is like second home for them. It is important to maintain ambience of dialysis center so that patients feel comfortable out there. There are also some technical needs, whereas there's enough light, enough ventilation, Water and drain line, as I explained earlier, need to be uh, properly planned. The door and corridor space for the easy movement of a stretcher, wheelchair, uh, or a bed, uh, that's very important. Uh, of course, fire and building safety uh, requirement as per the government norms, uh, compliance with the uh, fire and safety regulation is, is very, very important because uh, government is uh, very concerned about the fire and safety regulations uh, because of a couple of incidences of a fire in a healthcare uh, setup. Um, this is one of the center that uh, we have planned. Uh, you can see here a typical layout of a dialysis center. This was the area which was provided to us. Uh, there's a wall uh, between these two spaces. It was about 46 by 21.5 um, feet uh, area. And uh, so we had to uh, set up six machine uh, dialysis unit. So initially it was planned like this um, storeroom. Uh, reprocessing room, staff room, and the 
managed to place uh, uh, six beds out there. Um, but while we put that everything in a 3D image, uh, we could plan it in a better way. Uh, you can see here reprocessing area, changing room for the staff, storeroom with adequate space, with the store, storage racks, uh, staff room, lockers for the staff, um, and the space for other accessories like um, the e trolley, uh, refrigerator, all was uh, planned properly. So you can use this kind of uh, uh, tools, 3D imaging, so that um, you can plan your space uh, appropriately. This was another unit wherein we had a space limitation. Uh, we were given a small room where uh, we had to uh, place a five machines out there. Uh, you can see a reprocessing room was planned here and the five uh, machine with a recliner uh, was a plan in a, a small room. Uh, when you have a luxury of space, like this place where uh, we could uh, use maximum area and uh, spacious, can plan a spacious dialysis unit. This was the initial uh, layout uh, which was uh, planned. But later on, we realized that uh, there was a, a obstruction here for uh, the waiting area, and then we remove this door, uh, which was entering in the RO room from outside, and we created entry in uh, uh, from entry for the uh, RO room uh, from the dialysis in it, and we could uh, increase the waiting area space, and also entry to the RO room was given from the dialysis area. So if you have enough space, then probably you can plan your dialysis center nicely. You can optimize your dialysis, um, can optimize your space available for your dialysis center. But one has to remember that while you place your bed and uh, chair um, and machine, there has to be um, minimum space left between the bed uh, and the machine and also space for your um, drain line, electrical supply, water line has to be planned appropriately. So if you have enough area, you can plan spacious dialysis unit. If you have a um, space limitation, then probably uh, you can go for the uh, recliner to optimize uh, uh, space for your dialysis unit. So these are a few areas that you would require for your dialysis unit, like uh, dialysis treatment area, of course, is a, a key area wherein your patients get dialyzed there. You, you may go for the procedure room if you plan for a procedure like catheterization, procedure like kidney biopsy is um, you may have you know minor operation theater if you plan for a, a AVF surgery uh, so depending on your need depending on your plan what you want to do uh, you can have a, a different area of plan ready in advance a store room dialyzer reprocessing room water treatment room um, admin office uh, consulting room, staff room, reception counter, a patient visiting area, a maintenance and repair room, uh, toilet blocks, uh, pharmacy store if you are uh, planning to dispense uh, medic medicines uh, at your premise, and of course, uh, laboratory collection room uh, if you have a, a standalone dialysis center. Uh, if you have a hospital-based dialysis center, then probably uh, you need not plan in your dialysis unit. A hospital will have a, a separate area for the pharmacy and a laboratory. But if you plan for a um, standalone dialysis area, um, all these things need to consider well in advance. Um, 
so as to your requirement uh, for dialysis unit are fulfilled. Uh, these are the recommendations from uh, uh, Indian Society of Nephrology, uh, where it was published in Indian Journal of Nephrology, uh, wherein they recommended dialysis area uh, of 11 by 10 feet. Uh, you also need to have a nursing station, dialysis reprocessing area, uh, sufficient space for two person to work simultaneously, the storage area, they recommend uh, two separate store area uh, so that you know uh, dry consumable uh, and uh, wet consumables uh, are stored separately um, separate area for a preparation of sterile spray and dialysis uh, startup kit or medication preparation uh, space for emergency equipment uh, space for uh, wheelchair, trolley, etc. Um, and of course, minor operation theater or procedure room if you are uh, planning uh, catheter insertion, uh, kidney biopsy, or AVF creation. In that case, you will require uh, minor operation theater. So, depending on your need, depending on your requirement, um, you can plan various area uh, for your center well in advance. Um, these are few equipments that you require for your dialysis center. Of course, um, a dialysis machine is, is a, a key equipment uh, for your center. While you purchase all these equipments, one has to consider what mech you are going to use uh, or what mech you are looking for. Um, what is the technology that you are looking for? Are you going to use that technology? All those things need to be considered uh, while you plan purchase of this equipment. Uh, reverse osmosis plant, uh, I'll talk about a reverse osmosis plant uh, uh, design uh, uh, later. But for a reverse osmosis plant, what capacity you require, uh, what will be the AMC, CMC, uh, that, and that is very, very important. As per dialysis machine goes, many suppliers are providing um, uh, AMC, CMC. So in initially planning, uh, I would recommend go for the uh, long period of CMC, like for example, five years CMC while you purchase the equipment. Uh, that would save a lot of uh, money on the, which you are likely to spend on uh, maintaining of the machine, a spare part requirement and all. So if you go for a five year CMC, initially you might end up in spending uh, more money to purchase this uh, machine, but in the long run, uh, that would be very useful uh, to maintain the machine just in case you require uh, spare re replacement frequently. Dialyzer reprocessing machine, uh, what make you want, what disinfectant, uh, required for that dialysis machine and what would be the AMC, CMC cost? All those factors need to be considered. Weighing machine accuracy is very, very important. How this machine is calibrated, uh, that is very, very important. You also require voltage stabilizer or UPS. Um, the capacity of voltage stabilizer and UPS would depend on the number of machine that you are going for. Uh, what are the other equipment that you require to give uh, UPS or uh, um, stabilize voltage? Uh, so these factors are very, very important while selecting the voltage stabilizer or UPS. Uh, in case if your area has a, a power curse, then uh, you would require a diesel generator set. So capacity of diesel generator again would depend on uh, uh, how many dialysis machine you have, what capacity of uh, water treatment uh, plant uh, you are using. Uh, of course, you will require a license for a diesel generator, uh, fuel storage, that is diesel storage license. All those things will have to plan uh, in, in advance and appropriately. If you have a minor operation theater, uh, you would also require autoclave. 
and some emergency equipment like defibrillator, uh, suction machine, oxygen supply, uh, ambu bag, uh, ECG machine, multi para monitor. These, these are also um, important requirement uh, for your dialysis center. So, <clears throat> power cuts are very common in our country. Some places have a daily power cuts or a load shedding schedule. Of course, uh, nowadays, uh, water uh, electrical supply is quite consistent in most part of our country. But still, uh, in a rural area or small cities, uh, the power cuts are very common. In event of electrical supply failure, dialysis center will require diesel generator set to run the necessary equipment like dialysis machine, uh, water treatment system, etc. While deciding about the dialysis uh, center, uh, about DG set capacity or UPS equipment, one need to consider the requirement of power to run the necessary equipment. Power requirement for hemodialysis machine is uh, 230 volt and the current requirement is about 11 ampere to 15 amperes. Generally, dialysis machine requires 2.5 kVA electricity and the pumps and the motor in water treatment system require about 0.75 kVA uh, electric electricity per horsepower of the motor. Uh, you probably will have a multiple motors in your water treatment system. Uh, minimum, there would be three motor running at a time in a water treatment system. So depending on the capacity uh, of water treatment plant, um, you would have a different requirement. For a single machine, UPS of 3 kVA is uh, recommended. Considering the electricity requirement of other necessary equipments, if you have a 20 dialysis station, 20 dialysis machine in your center, you will require DG set about 125 kVA. While planning of installing DG set for a power backup, it is necessary to select DG set with auto on and off option to avoid long disturbances in a dialysis machine operation. Electricity supply from a DG set should be routed through the voltage stabilizer equipment to avoid damage of expensive uh, machines due to the voltage fluctuation uh, during uh, switching of uh, um, uh, your Uh, DG set uh, from uh, DG set mode to the uh, power supply mode or whenever power supply goes off and uh, you want to uh, switch that to uh, DG set that has to be auto on and off so that uh, you get less disturbance uh, in your um, center so that operation of a dialysis machine is not getting affected. Uh, generally, uh, DG set or UPS uh, need to be planned well in advance. And you also have to consider the future expansion uh, right from the beginning while you select the DG set uh, capacity or UPS capacity. Um, while planning of water treatment system design or installation planning of a water treatment system, certain information um, should be gathered before planning a water treatment system. Uh, quality of raw water, um, availability of raw water supply, uh, raw water storage capacity, size and weight of your water treatment equipment, uh, uh, space and location for a dialysis uh, water treatment system, 
preferably water treatment plant uh, should be placed on the same floor, uh, that of your dialysis unit. Uh, but uh, sometimes it is not possible because of safe space constraint. And then uh, we end up in having our uh, water treatment system on the terrace. Uh, but it is preferable uh, to have a water treatment system on the same floor uh, where you have uh, your uh, dialysis base and dialysis area. Generally, power requirement or power supply for a water treatment system is a three phase uh, power supply. So uh, it has to be planned in advance. Uh, so if your building has a single phase uh, water meter, which is a residential water, uh, single phase power meter, which is residential uh, power meter, um, then probably you will have to convert that into three phase. Also, this three phase will save uh, a lot of energy. Uh, it will save a lot of money on uh, electricity consumption. Uh, also, water treatment system uh, planning, uh, water distribution loop or uh, RO water distribution loop has to be uh, planned appropriately. So, when you think of uh, planning your water treatment system, uh, feed water analysis is, is very, very important. Uh, you need to look at the different physical parameter like uh, total dissolved solid, uh, conductivity, turbidity, slate density index, uh, microbial parameter like uh, total bacterial count or uh, Polyform, uh, all those parameters would be useful uh, while planning or designing your water treatment system. Also, you need to uh, look at uh, chemical parameter, organic contaminant, inorganic contaminant, uh, so that you can plan your water treatment uh, system properly. Uh, this is one of our uh, water treatment system wherein you can see here a pretreatment which consists of a sand filter, carbon filter, and softener. Uh, this is a RO plant and a storage tank appropriately designed with a, a conical base. This is a seal on the top so that atmospheric air do not enter um, in a storage tank. You can see the uh, micron filter filter over here. this is the air filter which filters the air uh, which enters into um, tank so that uh, water do not get contaminated with uh, atmospheric um, bacterial contamination and you also have a post treatment in form of uh, uv and ultra filter uh, to reduce the bacterial uh, contamination in our water uh, so when you plan your loop line or a water treatment uh, distribution pipe or RO uh, reverse osmosis water distribution uh, pipe, uh, this has to be in a continuous loop. You can see here, uh, this is uh, one of our centers, uh, water distribution system. You can see here the pipe. This is a PEX material that we use, uh, and we try to avoid the bend and uh, T's here. You can see the minimum uh, bend here, minimum uh, space uh, for uh, machine connection here, so that we can avoid the stagnation in uh, uh, RO water uh, loop line. Uh, staffing requirement for your dialysis room, of course, um, nephrologist is a uh, main person you know, for your dialysis unit. Uh, he is responsible uh, for uh, all medical uh, management of dialysis patient. 
uh, you also need a, a duty doctor or physician who can assist uh, nephrologists in patient care. Of course, uh, technical staff uh, like dialysis technician, nurses uh, are the key uh, personnel in your dialysis unit. Generally, a staffing ratio uh, is about one as to three or one as to four in, in few settings. Um, all dialysis staff need to be trained uh, to perform CPR in event of cardiac arrest uh, or respiratory arrest during dialysis. So trained and experienced staff, uh, technical staff, is, is, is very, very important. You can have a dialysis dietitian on board, uh, which can add a lot of value uh, to the your dialysis center. You also require administrative staff. A social worker, again, uh, can be very useful um, in order to uh, counsel your patient a uh, dialysis patient has uh, various social problems. So uh, having social worker on a board um, can be very, very useful. Other support staff like dialysis assistant, housekeeper, cleaners, uh, they are also the key personnel uh, for running your uh, dialysis center. So uh, these are the few requirement uh, like consumable and other requirement for your dialysis unit. Once you set up dialysis unit, once your premise is ready or premise is going to get ready, uh, you need to plan all this supply. This is the list of dialysis consumable. You also require uh, emergency medicine, uh, lean -in items, uh, housekeeping material, etc., uh, for your dialysis center. So all those things, all those purchases need to be plan appropriately. Um, you can approach various vendors, um, negotiate with them in advance uh, as per your requirements so that you know uh, it would be helpful uh, for uh, purchase of uh, this consumable. There are certain uh, statutory requirement and licensing requirement uh, for dialysis center. If your dialysis center is in hospital, then it is covered under hospital license. But if you have a standalone dialysis center or a daycare medical center where you place dialysis machine, depending on the state law and local authority regulation, a certain license, certain permissions, uh, certain NOC from various government agency uh, would be necessary, uh, like shops and establishment license, state pollution pollution control board license, local municipal cooperation permission for biomedical waste disposal, um, nursing home license uh, from local health agency uh, would be required. So this is the list of uh, legal requirement, this list of uh, certain registration and OCs. Uh, you need to have a registration under Nursing Home Act or uh, Medical Establishment Act, Biomedical Waste Management License, uh, you would require authorization from uh, Pollution Control Board. Uh, you would also require MOU, MOU to be signed with the vendor uh, who deals with uh, uh, biomedical waste management. You would also require NOC from Fire Department. If you're going for ambulance, then you would require um, commercial vehicle permit for your vehicle, uh, which is going to use as ambulance. Uh, you require a commercial driver license, uh, whom you are going to employ as an ambulance driver. You would also require a PUC for ambulance vehicle. Uh, building completion license, uh, that is also uh, one of the requirement. If you have a lift uh, in your building, then lift license, uh, DG set up for, uh, for commissioning, a diesel storage license if you have a DG set, medical and gas license under Explosive Act uh, if you have a oxygen uh, tank or oxygen plant, uh, then you require a medical gas license. Uh, depending on your state, uh, clinical establishment the Act registration, if applicable, you can go for that. Um, you would require 
MOU or agreement with uh, outsource human resource agencies uh, as per the labor law. If you are outsourcing certain uh, uh, facilities, outsourcing, outsourcing certain um, services like uh, housekeeping or security, um, then you would have um, MOU signed uh, with that particular uh, outsourcing agency. Uh, of course, you will have to follow the electricity rules uh, and certain licensing will be required uh, for your staff or human resource. You would require the provident fund uh, or uh, ESI. As per the ESI Act, uh, you will have to follow those uh, rules and regulation. Um, dialysis center or any healthcare facility uh, being a commercial establishment, you would also require a GST registration, um, PAN, uh, and also no objection certificate under Pollution Control Act for the air and uh, water pollution. Uh, if you have uh, guards with a weapon, uh, then probably you will require license as per the Arms Act 1950. So these are a few uh, legal list of uh, legal requirement, list of the statutory requirement that you would probably uh, require uh, while setting up a uh, dialysis center. Um, uh, certain uh, states, uh, they allow standalone dialysis centers uh, to be registered as a uh, clinical establishment uh, under Clinical Establishment Act uh, 2010. Uh, even uh, standalone center can be registered as a, uh, a clinical establishment under this act. Uh, <clears throat> so these are a few uh, recommendations or minimum standard uh, that you require for a dialysis center uh, if you are going for the registration of a dialysis center under uh, Clinical Establishment Act. Um, so <clears throat> you need to have a nephrologist on board, uh, qualified nephrologist with um, uh, DM or DNB qualification in nephrology. Um, as per technical staff requirement, um, at least one nurse and one technician uh, per five machine, that is the minimum uh, requirement um, for a dialysis center. Also certain uh, equipment you would require for your dialysis center. So these, these are the minimum standard uh, requirement um, if you are uh, going to uh, you know, register your center under Clinical Establishment Act. Uh, once you uh, done with uh, uh, you know, uh, setting up dialysis center, your premise is ready. Before you start your uh, operation, you need to check certain things. Uh, this is a kind of checklist that we generally follow uh, before starting a facility operation. Uh, like we we have a checklist. Uh, where civil work, we look at the civil work, electrical work, um, furniture work, premise cleaning, RO installation, um, loop line, piping, water analysis. Before you start your uh, dialysis operation, you need to check with the uh, water quality. Uh, dialysis room cleaning uh, or fumigation, preferably fumigation before you start your operation. Uh, machine installation, uh, machine quality check, like electrolyte testing of uh, dialysis fluid. Uh, so this is a checklist that one can follow to ensure that you are um, completely ready now to start the operation of uh, a dialysis facility. So <clears throat> once you have your center established, uh, one can think of uh, certain value added services to your patient like um, transport facility, um, rehabilitation, uh, which is again uh, very useful. 
uh, surveys for your dialysis uh, patients, dietitian consultation, counseling, all those things would add a lot of value um, to your dialysis center uh, if you have uh, these things in a place. Uh, once you establish dialysis centers, running dialysis center is challenging. So, um, as you know, dialysis is very expensive treatment. Uh, it is also recurring expenses for the patient. There are many limitations uh, to the dialysis service provider to increase the charges of dialysis treatment. Cost saving is an important component to run the dialysis center successfully. One has to think of reducing administrative expenses. Certain things need to be taken into account while working on cost-saving measure in a dialysis unit. Um, cost of consumable, wise and judicial use of consumable, avoiding wastage, proper utilization of manpower, uh, effective use of resources, proper use of water and electricity, proper maintenance of equipment to avoid the equipment breakdown uh, and spare part replacement. Uh, you can also go for the bulk purchase of consumable, which would reduce your cost significantly. And of course, strict control and the staff education can bring down the wastage significantly. So these are the few um, small things uh, you can um, employ in your dialysis unit, you can implement in your dialysis unit uh, and uh, reduce the cost of uh, dialysis treatment. Uh, so once you establish dialysis center, uh, start operation, uh, then uh, you need to think of, you know, uh, reducing the um, electricity, reducing the water consumption, uh, because uh, dialysis is a resource-hungry medical therapy. Um, in particular, uh, that volume of water that you use uh, for a dialysis, uh, demand of power, uh, electricity uh, for each dialysis session, and the amount of waste that uh, the, each dialysis treatment uh, generates, like plastic waste, paper waste, uh, biomedical waste. Uh, so one has to think of a concept called green dialysis. So what is green dialysis? Green dialysis is basically, uh, it tells us about, uh, you know, reduce the uh, carbon footprint. So everyone is talking about uh, global warming. So global warming is a big concern nowadays. Uh, because mean global temperature has increased by 0.8 degrees centigrade in past 50 years. Uh, there are certain things like deforestation, use of fossil fuels, um, waste generation, carbon emission by industry are the main reason for the climate change. A lot of debate and discussion is going on in this. As the healthcare professional, each one of us uh, need to be aware of this. There was one study conducted by data in the agency called Morsel India about awareness um, of uh, mm -hmm. uh, climate change in healthcare professional, which reveals that uh, about 93% of healthcare professionals are aware of a climate change. This study surveyed about 3,000 healthcare professionals. So, by and large, most of us are aware of this, uh, but are we putting enough efforts to reduce the carbon footprint? That's the question need to be answered. Um, NHS alone in UK, responsible for 25% carbon emission, hence considerable attention been given on reducing carbon footprint. Uh, one of the Australian studies shows that Six bedded dialysis center generates about a 10 tons of waste in a year. Also, the impact of climate change on human health is a significant. Rising temperature, rising sea level, um, more extreme weather 
an increased uh, CO2 level affects the human health. So all this has, climate change has a great impact on human health. So dialysis also generates a um, lot of carbon footprint. Uh, so to reduce the carbon footprint uh, in order to uh, avoid the global warming, uh, one has to think of a, a green concept, use of green energy. Because one patient in a year do about 156 treatment. So his 156 treatment requires about 62,400 liters of water and it generates about 187 kg of uh, uh, waste and utilizes about 100 and, uh, 1,872 kilowatts of energy. So the energy consumption, water consumption is phenomenal for a dialysis and it also generates a lot of waste. So one has to think of uh, recycling material, uh, reuse it uh, in order to, uh, you know, reducing the uh, carbon footprint. So how do you go green? One can go green by recycling water, use of RO reject water for other purpose, uh, like um, for your gardening, for your uh, uh, washrooms, you can use a uh, reject water uh, which comes from the RO plant. Uh, one can improve the recovery of a, a reverse osmosis plant. Uh, generally, if you have a good quality of uh, feed water, you can go up to 70 to 80 percent of recovery and also avoiding the uh, wastage of water. Small little things can be very, very useful. Sometimes your dialysis machine you know, keeps on. So whenever dialysis machine is on, it, it consumes about 500 ml of water per minute. So one has to use this very judicially. Um, sometimes it happens that patient is waiting, patient has not come for a dialysis and your machine is running there. So appropriate planning, um, time management uh, can save a lot of electricity and, and water in your dialysis unit. As for electricity goes, use of renewable energy source like solar, use of natural light uh, can also help to you reduce the electricity consumption. Uh, energy conservation strategies, um, motion sensor in uh, low traffic areas um, can save a lot of energy. Uh, use of low energy consuming lights like LED uh, or CLF. Nowadays, LED is very popular, which can save a lot of energy. Uh, use of air conditioner. Uh, also, your air conditioner use a lot of energy, a lot of electricity. So, Keeping temperature in dialysis room about 25 to 27 degrees centigrade and not at 16 to 18 degrees centigrade can, can save a lot of uh, electricity. Um, also, put off when not in use uh, can, can help you uh, in a great extent to save electricity. Um, so it, it, many times it happens that nobody is in room, but lights are on, fans are on, AC is on. Uh, so that can that that could be the waste of uh, electricity. Waste management, of course, segregation of waste, recycling of paper and glass, recycling of non-contaminated plastic, paperless record uh, can also save a uh, lot of uh, no reduce the paper uses uh, and of course use of uh, uh, fossil fuels um, is also contribute to uh, uh, carbon increasing the carbon footprint 
So use of solar electricity generates generator instead of a DG set. Uh, use of eco-friendly vehicles, CNG, green hydrogen, uh, or electrical vehicle so can reduce the uh, carbon footprint. So if you want to go green for your dialysis centers, um, you can have a certain KPI uh, placed for your center, like electricity consumption per session, that is kilowatt per session, water per dialysis session, liter per session, um, care related waste production, how much waste you are generating per session. Uh, you can have these uh, parameters or key performance indicator placed in your dialysis center. You can monitor it and improve upon it uh, uh, as, as you monitor it and employ uh, or implement certain strategy um, to reduce, reduce the electricity and water consumption and to minimize the waste. Uh, thank you for listening.